Hey you guys, okay so today I am doing my favorites for June and I'm doing it a little different. I think I've done this before. At this point I'm like, have I done, is this really like new? No, but y'all, okay. Today, I thought instead of just being like, that's my favorite, that's my favorite, that's my favorite, I thought I would just do a tutorial using all of my items. So I grabbed all my items that I would talk about as my favorites, things I've been using nonstop this month, put them on a little thing, brought them in here, and I thought, I'm just gonna get ready with you guys. So in a second, I'll have no makeup on, we'll get ready together and, um, and do that. But there's a few items that are not makeup related, so I thought I would kind of share those with you guys from the jump, little favorite things. This tank is one of them. You guys saw that I grabbed it in black as well. I don't know what it is about like an Adidas t-shirt, an Adidas tank top. It's just something that it isn't cheesy. I can throw it on. I don't care that it's a sporty thing. I don't even think about it. I wear it with wedges. I wear it with leggings and tennis shoes or flip-flops or whatever. It's just something I can throw on and not think about. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, those t-shirts last year were kind of like my, uh, my uniform. And this year I feel like... I'm really into these. Now something different about these is that they're very kind of like gaping on the side. So wear a little t-shirt or a little um, tank top under it. But love this peach color. You guys saw the black. And let me show you guys these shorts. This is a favorite as well. Shorts. I know last year I didn't get into it. In the year before. I didn't like wear shorts hardly at all. I know it was bizarre. You know what it was? I just didn't have any good ones. I mean, I did. I had one, uh, well, I will say, I had one pair, and I still have those. They were kind of like those high-waisted ones that were, like, really destroyed. But I don't know. I just didn't have any that I really loved. And so this year, I've gotten a few pair that, pair that I really love, and I will say, you know, I did splurge on these, but I don't really need any more. And if I do, I'm sure as hell not buying, like, expensive ones. But these are so good, you guys. I will link to these, these distressed ones, and then these white ones, which I have been wearing like crazy. They're wrinkled. I need to wash them. Um, but so good and I will always size up in shorts if you're 27 by 28 that's what I do so it just makes them easier Ugh, I don't know just that, that like thigh area I don't want to be like squashed into it's not a cute look I mean even these like when you sit down it's going like, but you know what I mean um size up in shorts I just think it's a good general rule I've been doing that literally since I was in high school I remember I had like a favorite pair of shorts that I bought a size bigger and I was like that's the trick and then let me show you these. You guys have seen me wear these so, so much, you guys. And I'm a mom. I usually just am very flat with shoes. <laughs> Nothing crazy. Don't wear, like, a lot of heels unless I'm going to, like, an event or something. You know, going somewhere special. I'm normally, like, all about comfort. These are actually comfortable, you guys. I wear them everywhere. When I go out with my kid, when I go out to dinner, it just doesn't matter. They're so good. And I actually, um, <laughs> I've worn them a lot. Like, I got a little thing on them. I need to figure out... And clean that up. This is the best color if you're pale like me. This color is very very flattering Especially if you wear these like with shorts or with something you know what I'm saying like it's not gonna make your legs look like dead and gross But I ordered another pair a while back Did I tell you guys this story and it was another um, It was the same shoe, but it was kind of like a this is like a very smooth like leathery suede I wouldn't even say it was suede. It feels like kind of like that gosh. What's that word? I don't know what that is you guys know what I'm talking about um, but the, the the pair that I got was more like hairy, not hairy, but it was more suede suede. And it was also like a nudie color, but it was more of like a like a cooler nude. And when I put it on, it didn't do nothing for my skin tone, so I had to send it back. But I do wish that I had another pair because I feel like these are getting a little knocked around. But whatever, I mean, I'm just going to wear them and enjoy them. I don't know if I should buy another pair. What I, I don't know. Okay, whatever. So... Let me share these with you guys and then we'll get into the tutorial because I really do love this makeup look and I have used some of like the best products that I think you guys are really going to love, especially this lip color. Um, in the tour that I did earlier this month of Olivia's bathroom or foyer and like kitchen changes and all that stuff, I showed you guys these bath mats and I actually went back and got some more. I do have a Target video coming up soon. I need to go back and grab a few more things and I, I might film another one soon. And I thought I'm not going to save this just to show them later because this is like a true favorite. So I bought this bath mat for Olivia's bathroom a while back and um, I kind of like fell in love with it. I got it at Target. It looks like something that you'd find maybe like at Anthropology or like at World Market. You know what I'm saying? It's not just like a rubbery like bath mat. It has this pretty detail. This actually looks nice and it's one of those that's going to wash and dry easily. I had one similar to this years ago at our old house and I washed and dried the hell out of it. I really do feel like it's going to hold up and it has like some nice sticker on the back. I don't know. I just feel like it's made really nice. So I went and I got grabbed another one so I could have another one like to put in front of her like sink area or whatever. And then for our bathroom, I grabbed two of these. Now these are just 
It's a little bigger, yeah. This one is very nubby. Um, I have one in front of our shower. I'm gonna use this one like in front of our tub or whatever. This one has a little more of like a coated, like rubbery back to it, but it's a very, again, like nice nubby bath mat. And they're both this Threshold brand that Target does, but I was just very impressed with these. And I just really do feel like they're gonna be very, very nice. I think if you buy a bath mat that's a little nubbier like this, it's easier to wash rather than those that are a little like softer carpety looking, those never wash up quite as good. So very, very impressed with these. They were very inexpensive and they look beautiful in your bathroom. It's not like you feel like you gotta like rip up the bath mats, you know, cause they look gross. Like if people are coming out, you know, I don't know, like someone's gonna like be in the bath. They look pretty on the floor. Okay, um, before I get into the makeup, this is one thing that I'm not gonna show in the video cause I'm not gonna be like using it, but I have really, really loved this so much. And I've told you guys about this quite a bit, I feel. But I never really used like a, an oily, like, you know, one that you have to shake up like on a pad. I just like to use my Bosch and Makeup Breakup Cleansing Oil. I love that stuff. I put it on my dry skin before I wash my face. Just get it all off, rub it in, give it a quick rinse, and then I use my face wash and stuff. Now sometimes you'll have a little bit of stuff left over from your um, eyes. And sometimes I would just put a little bit of like a light moisturizer on a thing or an eye cream and just kind of get that off. Or like if you have like residue from your lashes or whatever, Grab something extra. I think this is so nice, and I'm kind of addicted to using it because, like, even when I'm totally done with the, uh, washing my face and I don't have anything left behind, I'll grab this and still want to use it. It smells really good. It says it strengthens your eyelashes. Something about the smell. It smells very herbal. I think it's like the cornflower. Um, I'm sure that's what it is. It smells like cornflower because that's what it says it has. But the chlorine, you guys, try this. I will link to it. And, um, yeah, you guys, um, I know I talked about jewelry. Let me just show this really quickly. I didn't wear anything today. I actually do have my little initial necklace by L&M, which is probably my all-time favorite. I wear this all the time, but um, you can see it a little bit. Sometimes these like really high crew neck tops, you can't really see your jewelry much. You know, it just kind of hangs out. So. Um, so I didn't really wear anything today, but you guys, I know I talked about this, um, I feel like in a few videos, but in that um, clothing haul video, but y'all, this necklace is so good. Like I said, this is kind of like a little chokery piece. This is a little higher. It's so different than anything that I have. And um, just very like nice looking. Has that little flash of like the rhinestones, but then the gold. It doesn't look cheesy or anything. I love this. It's very light. And I always get compliments when I wear it. So that has been like my favorite jewelry thing. Um, so yeah, I know my tutorial is probably gonna be a little long. I feel like it ran a little long when I was filming it just because I didn't leave anything out and I was just talking and really, really talked about like all the makeup and everything, so it was really fun. So now I'm gonna show you all the makeup that I liked and we're gonna do it in a tutorial. Just gonna stick my hair back there. Um, okay, first let me show you this. So I've said so many times, I don't like to put a whole lot of things on my face, like primers and stuff like that. If your skin is not in a good place or if like you use moisturizer and your skin feels dry all the time, I mean, I would say get your skin in a good place. Don't always rely on a primer to like make, you know, the silicones in the primer or whatever to like make your skin feel smooth. I break out if I put a lot of stuff on my face, so I've just over the years gotten my skin in a really good like, um, like it feels nice, you know? So my makeup wouldn't look cracky if I like put it on, but, but I don't know. I just, I love using a moisturizer that's kind of everything, and this is the even better uh, skin Tone Correcting Moisturizer SPF 20. It smells like straight sunblock, you guys. It's like white, and honestly, like, I mean, when I first got it, I was so turned off by it, because I was like, oh, sunblock. But I really love it, and when you rub it in, like, I kind of use a ton of it, um, it makes your skin look just so glowy and pretty. Not from, like, anything in it. Like, it doesn't have, like, any shimmer or anything. I'm just saying, like, it just makes your skin look so good. My skin gets so red whenever I like touch it or apply moisturizer. I need to get another one. I have like nothing left in this one. Like probably just a maybe a couple weeks left. The thing with that one is that it's oil free, so it doesn't break you out. But yeah, it's nice. I don't feel like I have to use a whole ton of crap. I'm gonna use my foundation. Let me get through this kind of quick because y'all have seen this a million times. Um, because I want to show you all the new good stuff. But this beauty blender is a favorite. Been loving it. I've seen people use beauty blenders some different ways. The pointed part I always use under my eyes and for stuff like that or for, you know, your, if you did want to use contour, you can use it on its side or like highlighter, but hold the tip of it like that and use this end for your foundation. I saw someone the other day holding it like this and like bouncing that part. I don't know, I mean, whatever. I don't think you can go wrong, but like, just kind of easier this way. 
Then, right after I do my foundation, I do this. I put on my Dior Lip Maximizer. And I'll be honest, y'all. I think everyone needs to try this. This is so good. It's like the best lip treatment. I know I mentioned this before, but I would definitely repurchase it in pink like I always do. I've had so many of the pink ones, um, but I just grabbed the blue because I thought it was fun, but I don't know. I mean, you can't really tell a huge difference, but the pink is always like kind of flattering and pretty on your lips, whereas like this one does kind of give your lips a, I don't know, a little, makes them look a little purpley, but I don't ever really wear it on its own, but I used to wear the pink one on its own sometimes, so... I don't know. Okay, y'all, if you have not grabbed this Tatcha Pearl, try it. I'm the shade Moonlight, so I just always like work off the top. But it has um, like pearl extract in it, so it says it like, you know, kind of illuminates your eye area. And it's sort of like a treatment where you can apply your concealer over it if you want. A lot of times, this is like all that I use. And I put a little on my, um, I just use some of this, on my brow bone, too. And um, it's so, so good, you guys. If you do have really bad dark circles, you can apply another concealer over it. I've done that sometime, and it works flawlessly. So try this, you guys. I'm going to show you what I've been using my brows too lately. My brows look a little funky today, especially that one. I went back to an old favorite, you guys, for my brows. But um, I just thought it would be kind of fun today to do this as I, as I went with you guys. So a lot of times I'll just do that. Um, and then I'll apply like, you know, my little powder right there to kind of get rid of that line. But I want to show you, you can apply your concealer and I love, I've still been loving this and I've tried different things, but this one I just always come back to, the By Terry, the Densilis, whatever. I use shade number one in this one. I put it just right there. I don't double it up here because I don't really need it back there. Um, take your beauty blender and just kind of blend it all over that area. And I want to show you guys a new powder that I've really been loving too because you guys know I'm obsessed with the Too Faced Peach Powder to put right there. But you guys, I have discovered a new one. It is so good. Yeah, but let me do my um, bronzer really quick. I use the Chanel one um, as always. I can't like, I try to get into other things and I always just come back to this one. And I just dust it on really easy. Well, I don't know, it's not like a dusting of it because it's not a powder. It's like a weird creamy, kind of like a dry, creamy product. It's very odd, but it works really, really well. And the trick is don't pile on so much. Like use kind of a fluffier brush like this. Um, Chanel doesn't make this brush anymore, but I will link to one that is the most similar one I've ever found because it is kind of an odd type of brush to find. Um, so, so easy, right? Okay, so I want to show you guys this under eye thing real quick. Okay, so it's the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. So the actual container is really cool. Like the powder just comes out of the middle. It has this like thing where it keeps more from coming out, but it kind of like saves what you've used before and you can kind of like get it back in there. Um, I got a lot out. You can actually like use your beauty blender. You can dip a little in there. It just makes it really easy to like grab the powder and then you just stick it where you need it. Sometimes a beauty blender can really pack on a ton of powder. So just kind of be careful. But this stuff, you guys, like if you feel it, it feels almost like a liquid. It is so bizarre. And it doesn't give you like that cracky, like crepey look. You know what I mean? It's so good. It's just such a cool product. And um, I never put powder here. When you say under your eye, I just do it here. Um, just in that little zone. Definitely try that if you love powder. You can even kind of just like sweep it on in your T-zone if you want. It's just such a light, nice powder. But other than the Too Faced Peach Translucent Powder, it's the best. Really been loving that. Um, should I do my eyebrows just to like get them out of the way? I don't know. I feel like I should. So I have been using this super old school brow product. It's the MAC Lingering Pencil. This is probably like the first, oh shoot, the first thing I ever used on my brows. Like when I got into, um, this mirror is always like disgustingly dirty. Well, let me just draw attention to it. This is probably like the first brow product that I ever used. God, that powder looks so good up close. Um, when I started like filling in my little like brows that were literally nothing. So here's what you do. So it's just easy. It's kind of like the brow is, you know, it's like a little end. But I really do like this color. I really, really do. It just works really well. 
and it's so easy it just transfers really quickly so you don't have to like work with it such a long time which I love because usually like that's where I end up spending like way too much time on my brows is like I start just it's like I'm just going and going and going just trying to like add more and this just is so quick and easy don't you think that's good I mean, I don't know, I'm talking to you like this is like some new amazing product. We all know about this. But, I don't know y'all, I think I'm like really in love with this again. What do we think? I think that's real good. I think that's a big difference. Uh, without looking like too much, and it's just the perfect color for me. So this is my trickier brow, because I have that little scar. But you guys, I was just very pleasantly surprised. And it wears really well, like the color doesn't oxidize and like turn orangey or like change into some like weird ass color. It's really, really pretty. It's just a good tone, it's a good color. And I feel like I just constantly have like different favorite brow products and it's just funny when you go back to one that you loved so much. This one got a little aggressive. So yeah, this is so good. I just feel like this pencil is so nice and it was very quick, I feel. That's a good brow pencil though, you guys. I think it made such a big difference. Okay, next I'm gonna show you this. This is a new eyeliner that I have been loving. It's the Buxom Sexy Smoky Cajal Powder Liner in Sultry Black, and I also have the brown one. Basically, it's one of those things, it's kind of like on a spring where you can tell the product's in the lid, so it kind of like wipes in there when you use it. And I'm just gonna use this. And it's like a powdery thing. So, you can do like a really, like, you can do a really thin line, you can like lay it on its side and do like a really thick line. I just think it's really cool. I've never used anything like that before. I've used casual liners before in the past where like the actual liner like is the, you know, like the, the part, like the pencil-y part that rubs off. But this is like a sponge with the powdery stuff like rubbed on it. So, I don't know. I feel like you get, you can do like a very precise look with it obviously but I like that you can kind of get a little bit of a powdery look with it too. I really have been going for like a more like a softer liner look lately and I've loved I don't know I just go back and forth I love liquid liner and stuff but I always just kind of I don't know I always am into something different. But lately I've been loving a softer liner with like nothing on my lids or just a very natural shadow and like big fluttery lashes. And I haven't been like winging it out or anything. I'm just not into that right now. If I was doing like a really thin like liquid liner or something, I would do that. I'm just not loving that. Sometimes I feel like I'm just kind of, I'm over that, I don't know. And then um, smudge the edge a little. So yeah, if I do eyeshadow, I either use that Laura Mercier Eau Naturale or just like a really shimmery, like, you know, like liquid eyeshadow. But a lot of times, if I'm grabbing for my black, which I usually am, I'm going to show you what I do over my liner in a second. I'll just grab for this. It's my um, Man Eater palette, which I love. And I just get this middle color on a fluffy brush. And this is after my liner. I just do this. I just kind of sweep it right on my lid and then into the crease and go back and forth a little bit. And it's just such an easy... It's just an easy way to wear eyeshadow. Like you don't have to go nuts and like put a bunch of colors on there. But it gives you a little something. It looks um, it looks flattering. I'll take the black. This is just the best palette, you guys. Again, like favorites times 100. But I take a black uh, eyeshadow and I take this little angled brush and I just kind of do my eyeliner trick that I've always kind of done. I just like to smudge the, the shadow over the liner. And this is like a little more of a, not dramatic, but just like a little more of like a, Linery look like if sometimes I don't really want to wear liner I'll just take a little bit of the black eyeshadow and just like smudge it and make it like really light and pretty I just kind of smudge it into the edge of that liner and like make it look a little softer You've got like a big sexy liner, right? Um, you can take a little bit of the brown kind of just like smudge it I usually don't like do a whole lot of that, but I don't like a lot of makeup on my lower lash line but I think that can be cute. Okay, and then um, I've been loving this, you guys. This is totally something I did not expect to love because I'm very picky about my uh, mascara. Usually I just have like my few I like, but it's this Kush Mascara. So good. 
So I have been living for some lashes this month and I love eyelashes. I love doing them kind of in subtle ways sometimes. Like even if you just don't put on any mascara and you just put on some like really wispy ones. I love these eye lures and the number 115s are the ones I've been wearing. Um, I also love the 155s. They're a little harder to find, but the 115s are very good too. And the 117s, I believe. And like I said, you don't want to have to like wait on it to get like tacky or do anything nuts. Um, it just kind of goes on and I, I mean, it may not work so well for your eye shape. I know everybody's is different, but these have just been the easiest to apply just because they're shaped like your lash line. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't lift because they're just naturally curved. And then that glue really keeps them on. And these don't feel heavy throughout the day. Like they don't feel pokey. You can't feel the band. They don't look like big, you know, like crazies. They're just real good. The other one on. I mean, they're just so easy, y'all. It's just the easiest lashes ever. I just need to buy a ton of these. Like, I used to buy so many of the 155s and then they got harder to find. Um, but these are just like the easiest eyelashes ever. They look beautiful and you don't even need to put on mascara. I mean, you can if you want. Um, sometimes I'll put just like a little bit down here, but I don't even think I'm gonna do that today. But the mascara I've been loving is this Kush by Milk. You guys, I've talked about this so much. It's just so beautiful. It gives you like big, really pretty fluttery lashes. You can build. It, it's, it's just so buildable and nice. And then um, the NARS Orgasm Blush. I am so into again, you guys. Oh, I should have used my highlighter first, but whatever, I'm gonna show you this. Okay, I love, I mean, I have so many good highlighters, but um, I wanna do, I'm gonna do a video soon on like glowy products. I think I'll do that next. But this Charlotte Tilbury is so good. The Beauty Light Wand, it's so nice. It stays blendable. For a while, like, I have had some that are just, like, see, it's just beautiful. Um, there's some that are just a little tough to blend that are a liquid like this. This one is just so easy. You can do it with your fingertips, with your beauty blender. Um, it's just so good. I put a little bit there. You can take whatever's left and, like, put it on your nose, or you can just put it right on there and, you know. I've actually used quite a bit of it, like I've had it for a while now, but um, but it is just such a good product. Like you can mix it with your foundation, like squeeze out a little on your hand, and then put your foundation on your hand, you know, and then just kind of mix it like that. There's just so many ways that you can use it, but it's such a pretty product. I'm kind of grabbing for this one again more than anything else. And then blot your lips, because this stuff is a little goopy, this lip gloss, but I like a little bit on there still when I do my lip stuff. And I use Mac Whirl, which is favorite. Favorite, favorite. And then this lip color, which is new, I've loved. I've, I've linked to this in a lot of my recent videos. Have I talked about it? I think I've even mentioned it a couple times, but it's what I've been wearing most of the month. It is the Laura Mercier Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in Ruthless. You guys, it's the prettiest pink, and isn't that so pretty? Now, it is very matte if you put it on just over dry lips, but if I use it over that Dior, you know, it is a little, you know, it's like more like a lipstick. It's not like to totally matted out, but I love it so much. It's just nice. You just don't really need anything else. You can like take a gloss with you and put it on throughout the day. I mean, it's not like a liquid lipstick that's going to like set. It's just, you know, it's, it's a stick. It's like, you know, it's a stick product. You know, it's going to set to some degree because it's matte. Um, but if you put it on over a lip gloss, if you put it on, if you put it on over lips that have a bit of a gloss, like I did, it's gonna feel a little creamier. Um, but I love these. I took these out of my purse because this was actually in my purse when I went to grab it to do the video. And I thought I'm gonna show these because I just something about these is just so good. I've used the Celeste. I've bought the Kimberly one a couple times. I bought the Celeste a couple times. Um, the white Russian one is really pretty. The one, do you remember that? I gotta find that one. Did I? I think that was pretty old. I think the one, remember it had like the little jewel on the top of it. But these two are really good as well. These are the ones I've been have that I've been using in my purse. This is the Abigail shade, which is a little like, um, 
wants well, the color of my shirt. And then this one called April, which is pretty as well. The Kimberly one's a bit more of a pale pink, but um, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Sometimes, like, I'll just, I'm not gonna do it right now when my lips are done, because I feel like when you put these on, they are a bit plumping. They do have that, like, plumpy feel. Honestly, kind of like this Dior does. And if you put it on over your lipstick, it kind of, like, makes your lipstick look a little thin and like soupy. It kind of like almost wears it down. So I don't like to do that right away, but like in the car, on the go, like this is my go-to or I just put it on by itself. Um, so, but anyways, I was out to dinner with my friend the other night and I pulled mine out and she was like, oh, I love that. And she had hers too. And it's like, it's such a good lipstick or lip gloss. So I think that you guys, if you haven't tried that, try that. And um, then the, gl the Glam Glow, you guys, the Glam Glow. The Glam Glow Glow Setter Makeup Setting Spray. I kind of went back to the Fix Plus and I was using that a little bit. And then I busted this out again and I was like, holy goodness. Like the spray is just like perfect. It actually makes your skin look glowy. And it actually, I feel, makes your makeup last a little longer and make, it makes it look a little nicer. Um, but yeah, super good stuff. So let me show you this. So I didn't really fix my hair much today. Yesterday, I did like a quick little like bendy curl. I didn't like really do like really tight curls or like curly curls or wavy curl. Well, I mean, it's kind of like a loose wave. I literally just took my time iron. Mine isn't plugged in right now. And um, I just kind of did, I just kind of did this number. Let me just show you. I kind of took it and just did like big pieces and did just like a quick, oh, this is horrible because it's not, just a quick flip. And it kind of gave my hair like a little bit of something. And then today, um, like I brushed it out, you know, and just kind of wore it soft. And then, um, I don't know, I'll be ready to wash it tonight. But today it just felt kind of, I don't know, just easy. It gave it a little bit of like a flip, a little bit of a texture. So y'all, listen, listen to me. Watch my video on this. I have a few videos on this. Try this dang time iron. You will not regret it. It's okay. But yeah, you guys, these beauty items are so incredibly good. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was probably super long. I just thought I would, you know, whatever. Just do a little tutorial and kind of like show you everything in action. But I hope that y'all liked it. I hope that you guys had such a wonderful month of June and that you have a wonderful, wonderful July. I cannot believe it. It's my birthday month, y'all. July. Anyways, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will link to all the goods as usual, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye, you guys.